Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we are continuing our series today on the General Maths Paper 2 from 2021 in Queensland, Australia. And we're looking at a question on bivariate data. It was question five and it's a complex, unfamiliar question. Researchers gathered a set of data to determine if a model could reliably predict systolic blood pressure given a person's age. Now, if you're like, not like me and you don't know a lot about medicine, that might have been something to put you off straight away. This word's systolic blood pressure. You might be thinking, did we even learn about this in general maths? Well, probably not. This is the context of the question. Don't panic too much. Let's see if we can get some maths information out of this question and work out what we need to do. One candidate was three, 31 years old and had a systolic blood pressure of 119. For this data, the correlation coefficient, ah, here's something we know something about, R, Pearson's correlation coefficient is 0.875. Now, just looking at that, we can see straight away that we've got positive correlation and we also have very strong correlation as well. That might be important. Let's see where we go with that. The standard deviation of the person's age is four and the standard deviation for the systolic blood pressure is six. So we've got an SX and an SY. Now you might remember that when we use standard deviation of an X and the standard deviation of a Y, that's when we're using that information to try and work out the values of A and B. So we might be using this information to come up with an equation. So we'll keep that in the back of our heads for now. A residual plot was produced for the results. Okay, so we've got a residual plot. That's something else that we're familiar with. Remembering that residual plots tell us a little bit about the equation, that it's appropriate for being in a linear equation. We can see by looking at the scatter plot that it's random. That might be useful information. So we know that about residual plots. We'll keep that in the back of our heads as well. Determine the actual systolic blood pressure to the nearest whole number for the oldest person in the sample, 40 years old. Whoa, now, when I first saw this question, I thought, what the heck's going on here? This is kind of, I think, an, like an evil genius question. It really is a cool question. It very is very unfamiliar because here I am thinking, oh, maybe I need to know something about um, whether this is appropriate linear model from the residual plot. No, I've actually got to work out the actual blood pressure of somebody, the, the oldest person in the sample, the 40 year old. So you might be wondering, well, how do I go about doing that? Okay, so let's put our thinking caps on. Now, this is kind of like when we use Polly as problem solving model. We've seen some important information. We're planning and working out what to do next. Well, first of all, let's recognize as well that this is a residual plot, not a scatter plot. So what that means is a residual plot models the actual X values on the X axis and something called the residuals on the Y axis. And we can see they've actually given us the formula for residuals in case we couldn't remember what that was. There is a quick way to remember that that formula is residual equals actual takeaway predicted. The way I remember that is RAP, RAP. So it goes nicely in a nice order, but they've given that to you. So you didn't need to know that, but it is going to be kind of important to know what a residual is. It's the difference between the actual result that was measured in an experiment. So we can see we've got to find that actual result and it's the difference between that and a predicted. Now predicted means that we have substituted every X value into equation and we've worked out what the prediction from the model would be for that particular value. So this is kind of important to understand what a residual is, what an equation is, and what we do with that equation. So we will probably need to use this formula, residual equals actual takeaway predicted, to work backwards and try and work out the equation of the line. So we're going to find that actual blood pressure for the 40 year old person. There they are on the, the residual plot. We can actually read off the residual plot and work out what that residual value is. Now, this is kind of small in the exam. It was easier to work out what that was. But um, when you read it really closely, it doesn't look like it on this particular screen, but if it was bigger, it was about a 1.4. Although the QCAA would have accepted a range from about 1.3 to 1.5. So even if you called it even 1.45, you would have been in the right ballpark. Okay, so we're gonna call it 1.4 today. Now to find the actual blood pressure, we need to firstly work out what the predicted blood pressure was by the model. So we've got some information we can actually use. We do have an X value there, they're 40 years old. Okay, we've got the residual. We know the residual is 1.4. We can actually work backwards a little bit 
and work out something there. Okay, so we need a least squared regression equation to actually use that because if I work backwards, well, I'm missing their actual value. I don't know what the model even predicted with that X value. I could substitute an X value into an equation and work out what the model is going to predict, but I need the equation first. So as I'm working through this, you can see that we, we sort of go down a, a road and then we go, ah, I need this information. I don't have it. Let's try a new road. Okay, so let's think about what our formula is for that least squared regression equation because we do have some information that might help us work out the equation. Then we can get the predictive value, then we can get the actual value. Okay, so we've got to find A and B. And you'll know off your formula sheet um, that to get A, you've got to get B first. So this kind of question really does test your ability to understand the big picture of bivariate data analysis. One thing leads to another. We're kind of working backwards the whole way through. So here's our formula for B. B equals R uh, multiplied by the standard deviation of Y divided by the standard deviation of X. And aha, we've got something we can work out here. We've got that information. Let's substitute that information into the question and get B. Ha, B is 1.3125. So we've made some progress. In fact, we've actually just earned ourselves one out of six marks because we've correctly determined a B value. Okay, so we're going to use that B value now and try and come up with the value for A. Now you'll recall the formula for A is the mean of Y take away B multiplied by the mean of X. Now we're not given any information about the means in this question. So that might get us to another roadblock where we go, oh, I can't progress any further. This is impossible. Well, we could actually go and work out the means of those ages because we're told the ages are, um, there's two people who are 30, one who's 31, 32, a 34 year old, and then we jump up to three 38 year olds, a 39 year old and a 40 year old. So we could add all of those up and work out the mean of X, but that really isn't gonna help us because we don't know any actual values for blood pressure, except for that one person who's 31. So uh, we're kind of stuck there. That was where probably a lot of students did get stuck. They probably worked out the mean of the ages and then went, you know what? This is impossible. I can't go any further, but it's not. We do have some information about our 31 year old. We know that their actual blood pressure is 119. So what we could do is we could work out what the model would have predicted by using their residual. We can work that backwards to find A. This is where probably only the brightest students were able to work this bit out because it really does take some very creative problem solving skills. Okay, so here's our 30 um, one year old here. We know that their actual blood pressure was 119. We can look there and work out what the residual is, looking at the formula there. So we worked out eh, just by reading off the graph, it's about negative 0.75. Give or take a little bit, they would have accepted a bit of margin for error. That is the residual. It's going to be equal to the actual 119 takeaway predicted. Substitute that in and we work out the predicted blood pressure for that 31 year old is 119.75. So you might be wondering, where is this going? Well, you actually earned a mark for getting that predicted Y value. So we're two out of six marks there. We're going to use that, that information now to develop our equation. So there's our equation Y equals A plus BX. We know what B is. But we also know what X and Y is now. We've got X, um, which is the person's um, age, and we've got their um, actual, um, the actual predicted pre pre blood pressure from working that out from the residual on the previous slide. So that actual value that the model predicts is 119.75, and we can substitute all of that in, and we work out that the value of A is 79.0625. That would have been our third mark. Now you'll notice it doesn't have the word correctly determines the A value. That means that the QCAA would have given you a follow through mark if you'd made a little mistake somewhere earlier on. Okay, and they would have let you carry that through. So there we are, we're halfway through the question. We've got three out of six marks. So now we've got the values of A and B, we've got an equation, y equals 79.0625 plus 1.3125x. So we're almost all the way there. But we still haven't worked out the actual blood pressure for the 40 year old. Okay, so we do have a predicted blood pressure. You remember we did that quite early on and we've got their actual age, we can substitute the prediction from the model in and work backwards to the actual. So let's do that. 
we're going to use that model to predict their blood pressure. So if we substitute X is 40 in, we get Y equals 79.0625 plus 1.3125 times 40, and we get a predicted blood pressure of 132.9625. Now we've got the residual for this person who is 40. So now using the formula residual equals actual takeaway predicted, this is the predicted number, we can work out the actual. And we've got our fourth mark here for substituting x equals 40 into the equation correctly and coming up with a predictive y value for the 40 year old. Now that we've got that, let's work backwards and find the actual blood pressure using the formula. So we know that the residual for that person was 1.4. We worked that out very early on. And then we're going to be taking um, actual takeaway that prediction from the model. Add the two together, we get an actual blood pressure of 132.9625. And we need to round that to a whole number because it doesn't make sense to have blood pressure to four decimal places. Now, I think that's a bit rough. A lot of people in their teens don't really know how blood pressure is measured, but you'll notice here that they've given it a round number of systolic blood pressure of 119. And they've told you here to the nearest whole number. So you actually had to read the question carefully. And that's kind of hard when there's so much going on and it is kind of overwhelming. You could easily miss this little bit here and some students would have. They would have given the actual with four decimal places. Then they would not have got this fifth mark, which is determining the actual blood pressure as a whole number. So make sure you read your questions very carefully and get the whole piece of information. Now we've got one mark to go. You might be thinking, well, we've already done everything, I've got the actual blood pressure, what else do I need to do? Well, there was a six mark warded for showing logical organization, communicating key steps. So that's doing things like writing formulas, it's doing things like writing little subheadings that explain what you're doing, not just random working all over the page, which is tempting when your brain is going in a hundred directions, like this question kind of did take us down some blind alleys. So you may have started working at the mean of X and it didn't take you anywhere. That wouldn't have necessarily meant you would have lost this mark but you would have had to clearly mark what you were doing like write the formula for the mean so it's clear that you're working out what the formula is um, that you're trying to work out the mean of x um, when you're calculating a and b perhaps even writing the formula y equals a plus b x so it's clear that you're actually trying to come up with the least squared regression equation not just dumping a whole lot of random numbers on the page well, I hope you found this helpful. You probably will want to watch that again and pause and think really carefully about some of the steps that we discussed today because that was probably the most challenging question on the whole paper. In fact, the very first time I did this, I did take quite a long time to work through it by myself just because it did take us down lots of little blind alleys trying to work out a strategy that would help us to understand the question. And I think the biggest thing to take away from this is to understand the difference between an actual and a prediction. Just remember, actual is something that you've measured in real life. It's a real result. But when we use the model and we substitute a value for X or Y into a model, we're predicting what might happen in real life. And the difference between real life and a prediction is a residual. So understanding that that's how residuals can be used really helped us to solve the problem. And if you found this question helpful, why don't you tell a friend that would make you the world's best friend and maybe even tell your teacher so that they can share with the class some great ideas as well. You could even share with us in the comments if this video was helpful to you. Even better, like and subscribe to the channel, hit that notifications button so you'll always know when the next video is ready to watch. You can even follow us on social media too and that's a good place to get in touch if you've got questions on Facebook or Instagram or email us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to me today and to stop by here on the channel. Why not look through the rest of the playlist? You might find some other interesting videos to watch to help you prepare for external exams, whether you're in Queensland or other states around Australia. Well, you've been watching McClutchy Mass and I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.